Good morning. Today we're going to be discussing programmable limit switch technology. Uh, today's agenda will go over what is a programmable limit switch and then jump right into the different types of limit switches, uh, whether both uh, mechanical or electrical, and then the different features of limit switches, programmable limit switches, and then dive right into the different products that AMCI offers under our PLS or programmable limit switch product line. Uh, principle of a programmable limit switch. Uh, a programmable limit switch is based on the concept of a rotating cam limit switch, similar to what you would see in your car for anyone out there that's a gearhead. Uh, a rotating limit switch is used to turn outputs on and off based upon mechanical position of a shaft. A cam limit can be either mechanical or electrical. Mechanical units are often referred to as rotary cam limit switches. A rotary cam limit switch can be either mechanical or optical, meaning either a mechanical switch like you see in the photo there or an optical lens. Uh, electrical units are commonly known as programmable limit switch or PLS. Types of cam limit switches. Uh, first is a mechanical limit switch. Uh, the benefits of a mechanical limit switch is there are no electronic components, so it makes them very simple to use. Um, they are a low cost option. And with a mechanical limit switch, select the number of limits that you need. So if you only need five, you only order five, you need 12, you order 12, pretty simple. Um, as you can see in the picture on the side, it's a very simple concept. Uh, you have a wheel with a lobe on it, and that lobe uh, turns a switch on and off based upon the rotating shaft. Uh, but some of the drawbacks of a mechanical limit switch are changing. The setup is very cumbersome. Oftentimes you have to get in there with a tool, typically a wrench or whatnot, and adjust them open and closed. Um, so the adjustment is very coarse, and oftentimes uh, getting back to the same position between setups uh, is very difficult and oftentimes um, impossible. And as you would expect, uh, the mechanical limit switches wear, so there's replacement components that are needed. Um, and as size increases with the number of outputs, so obviously a four output box would be much smaller than say a 12 output box, uh, requiring much more space for mounting, uh, whether it's on directly on the machine or in a panel. Uh, the second option of a cam limit switch is an optical version. Uh, the optical version, uh, you can select the outputs based upon the types of loads you're switching, whether it's an AC load or a DC load for your outputs. Um, there's no mechanical limit switches, so there's no components to wear out. And just like with the mechanical unit, you can select the number of limits you need, uh, reducing cost. Uh, and expand and in, uh, allowing some expandability um, to your system. The drawbacks would be uh, setup is cumbersome. Um, as you can see here, um, you need a wrench to uh, adjust those lobes open and close for adjusting your on-off points. Um, and then that arrow is pointing to the photo eye, which is turning on and off as those lobes pass through uh, the photo eye. Um, which means uh, as that setup becomes more and more difficult, the precision and repeatability of the system is limited. Uh, the last version would be a programmable limit switch. This is the electronic device. Uh, the, elect the benefits of a programmable limit switch are greater flexibility. Um, I can order these units uh, in different uh, output capacities, anywhere from uh, eight outputs up to 64 outputs. Um, and even though I've increased from eight to 64 outputs, the size of the device itself really hasn't grown in size very much. Uh, we can provide these with special software features. So depending upon the application, the customer can order things such as timed outputs, uh, output groupings for particular applications such as packaging equipment or uh, metal forming applications. Uh, and the resolution and repeatability has increased as well because uh, with this, Every time I want to go back to a particular setup as I change from one setup to the next, uh, if I had it at 100 degrees last time, I just simply program that output to 100 degrees and it's the same point it was last time, no guessing uh, where my on-off set points are. 
Uh, some of the drawbacks would be high initial investment. Um, as you would expect uh, with this type of device, because it is electronic, there is a higher uh, upfront cost than, say, a standard mechanical or optical limit switch. Um, part of that is electronics, but uh, the second part would also be that it requires an external sensor, whether that sensor be a resolver or encoder of some type. Some of the basic features of a PLS are programmable scale factor. So I can set my uh, scaling, so to speak, the counts per turn um, of that encoder or resolver anywhere from two to a thousand counts per rotation, uh, which would allow me either some precision or if I want to set it to 360s, I can then relate the position to just simple degree position. The uh, limit outputs are fully programmable, uh, anywhere from zero to 360 degrees. Uh, you don't have any sort of mechanical limitations when setting those. Um, you can also program in multiple programs and store multiple programs in this. So if you have several setups on the machine that you're running, you just say, I'm running setup one, I'm running setup two, load it up, and you're ready to go. No one has to go out to the machine and make adjustments. Uh, there's what's called speed compensation. Speed compensation uh, adjusts the timing of the limit outputs uh, internal to the device. So as the machine speed increases, uh, the position at which those uh, outputs turn on and off remains the same mechanically on the machine. And another feature that's standard to these types of devices is motion detection, which can be used as a safety feature where uh, it's monitoring the uh, position feedback of the sensor. And if at any point that position feedback stops, an output turns on telling you that machine has stopped. So if in case uh, you have a situation where the sensor breaks or the cable breaks uh, and that output turns on, you can tell the machine operator or uh, have the machine automatically stop based upon that loss of motion detection. Some optional features uh, are output grouping. Um, this is a feature used oftentimes on packaging equipment. Uh, input conditioning. Input conditioning allows us to take an input and tie it directly to an output. So if uh, I'm scheduling an output to turn on at a specific position, but uh, the related input isn't on, the output won't fire, uh, which is good for assembly type uh, applications. Whereas if a part is not in place, I don't want an output to fire. Uh, for metal forming applications, uh, we can do what's called die protection, which allows you to bring uh, particular sensors back to the PLS. So if at a particular point in the machine stroke, we don't see an input trigger in a condition that we expect, um, we can stop the machine for safety reasons. And we can also do what's referred to as brake monitoring, which again is a metal forming application where we can monitor the stopping time of the machine uh, and based upon that stopping time, we can monitor uh, the brake wear, essentially, of the clutch brake system for the metal forming application um, and use that as a monitoring and maintenance type uh, setup. Some typical PLS applications, um, there are many. Standalone PLS, uh, whether mechanical or electronic, is used when simple repeatable control is required. Uh, for example, um, in remote locations like a water treatment facility or wastewater facility, um, we have sluice gates or gates that need to be open and closed. Um, and we can use the PLS along with a rotary sensor to monitor that position and turn the uh, motor controller on and off based upon the position feedback uh, of the rotary sensor. Or uh, overhead gantry cranes uh, with multi-turn sensors, uh, we can program in specific set points to uh, automate crane control, whereas we fire a motor on and off, and when it reaches a specific position, it can stop, uh, which is something that you would see oftentimes in plating lines. Um, another application, you know, systems with PLCs can benefit from a PLS when scan time of the PLC adversely affects the repeatability and switching time of the PLS output. Uh, because the PLS has a built-in processor, it can manage output updates of 100 microseconds or less, allowing repeatability of output control of one degree at speeds up to 2,000 RPM. Um, as you would suspect with a PLC, uh, scan times can be in the neighborhood of 5, 10, 20 milliseconds. Uh, when my machine speed starts to increase above 200, 300 revolutions per minute, which is not uncommon in metal forming and packaging applications, 
Um, and I have very small programmable limit switch windows, and I'm trying to do that um, inside the PLC. Um, I can actually get to a point where um, between scans, the uh, PLC program doesn't even see the position change enough to turn an output on and off. Uh, using a PLS uh, eliminates those types of problems. And again, those would be in applications, uh, high-speed high speed metal forming presses, uh, packaging equipment, um, these types of systems where you're going to see machine speeds uh, well over 200 RPM, you know, in the neighborhood of 600, uh, even 1,000 uh, cycles per minute. Uh, so what types of PLS uh, products does AMCI offer? Uh, well, we have a wide range of products um, in the standalone product family. Um, we have solutions that work both in single turn and multi turn applications, uh, anywhere from 16 to 32 outputs. Um, with the uh, IPLC uh, system that you see here shown, uh, we can provide uh, optional analog outputs. Uh, they're relay based, meaning there's a separate relay board for uh, firing your outputs, which means I can use either mechanical or solid state relays, allowing for uh, AC or DC type loads to be switched on and off. Uh, these types of products should be used uh, for general machine control, uh, metal forming applications, gantry hoist positioning, things of that nature. Um, another solution would be our uh, Genesis standalone PLS controllers. Uh, with the Genesis family, they come in two uh, flavors first being the Easy Pack, the second being the Press Pro. In both of these solutions, they come in a self-contained package, meaning there's no separate relay board. The outputs are built directly onto the product, uh, reducing panel space and uh, overall system cost. Um, with the Easy Pack, uh, it's available with eight, or if you were needed it, up to 16 outputs. Uh, with the 16 outputs, the additional eight would at that point, then go to a separate relay board. Uh, with the Press Pro version, uh, there's six PLS outputs and two fault outputs. Uh, those two fault outputs would be uh, what are referred to as top stop and fault stop outputs, which are common type controls for metal forming applications. Uh, for the Easy Pack, the programming is focused on packaging applications. Um, that's what the software features that you would see uh, programmed in there would be designed for those types of controls. Uh, with the Press Pro Genesis, you would see features typically found in metal forming applications such as die protection, uh, brake monitoring, so on and so forth. For PLC-based controls, we have a wide range of offerings. Uh, these would be used for Allen Bradley-based PLCs, uh, whether it be a Slick 500, for their older PLCs, even uh, systems that have the old PLC-5s. For newer systems, we have Compact Logics, Control Logics, Micro Logics, 1500 PLC-based PLSs. Uh, with the module-based solutions, we have eight or 16 uh, output solutions. Uh, they're either relay-based or transistor-type outputs. Uh, with the PLS controls for PLCs, they're available uh, only with resolver-based controls. Software features, just like we have with the standalone systems, would be that include speed compensation, uh, standard PLS outputs, where the outputs fire uh, based upon position, but also what are referred to as timed outputs, where you can turn an output on based upon position and allow it to turn off uh, X number of uh, milliseconds later, and pulsed outputs. Uh, pulsed outputs are commonly used in applications such as glue gun control and packaging and cartoners, where rather than putting a complete uh, strip of glue down on a box, they want to make maybe put little dots down to save on product. Um, there's where pulsed outputs would be used. Um, and just like we have with a standalone, you can buy modules with application-specific functions for metal forming and packaging applications. For network solutions, we have our Nexus PLS. Uh, with the Nexus PLS, it's either resolver or incremental encoder based. It has eight built-in solid state relay outputs, uh, which is expandable up to 16 outputs with a relay board. Um, it can be programmed from any PLC using any of the industrial networks, such as Ethernet IP, Profibus, uh, Modbus TCP. Uh, so software features 
uh, standard software features that we have in all of our programmable PLSs, speed comp, timed outputs, uh, and application specific functions. Um, this is great for systems where uh, maybe we don't already offer a PLS plugin module, but also for systems where we may have a module like we do with the Rockwell PLCs, but uh, they don't have rack space or they want to remotely mount the PLS closer to the sensor or the machine control. And this allows them to do so uh, using the network connection for programming. Uh, and then the latest and greatest uh, of our PLS control is our AnyNet programmable limit switch. It's our most versatile PLS to date. Uh, with this product, it can be, depending upon the version that you order, uh, is available uh, with either resolver input, SSI encoder input, or incremental encoder input. So as you can see, it uh, falls into a lot of different applications. Uh, uh, it has eight outputs. Uh, and an additional 16 outputs, which are expandable through relay boards. Uh, with this device, um, we've added a new feature. Uh, with this, it has a built-in web server, so you can program it through any sort of interface that uh, has a web browser, uh, whether it's a PC, um, a small, uh, you know, you can buy uh, touch panel displays, HMI interfaces now that have built-in web servers. So you don't have to have any sort of programming uh, feature to do that, which is a great way to program one of these devices uh, when someone's uh, programming it uh, as a standalone device. Um, and it also has a network connection. So if you want to program it uh, and include it into a PLC control solution, you can do that as well. So um, one product, both being a standalone device or a PLC-based uh, PLS. So very, very excellent device. Uh, lots of new features. The web server really something I think that people uh, will find useful um, for uh, new installations. Uh, that wraps up the uh, PLS control uh, discussion. If anyone has any questions, I'll entertain them at this time.